Hi, I'm Charles McFall. I'm with the Podcast and Track. Thank you all for coming out to see me. I know you're here for me and not Zach. It's all right. You know. Daphne is going to introduce the podcast. We're going to get going. And again, thank you all for coming out. All right. I'm going to actually pass it over to Elizabeth over here to introduce the podcast because... That's how we And do then it. she's oh, going to pass it over to me to oh, introduce the podcast. No, sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> you can introduce the podcast. Wait, before we start, then, though, I had two questions. <laughs> Uh, yes, maybe. <laughs> My first question is, how many people here have seen Black Sails? Because I know people love Zach for a lot of reasons. All right. Can the podcast hear the hand raising? <laughs> how about this? How many people here have watched Black Sails? <laughs> See, that's, that's how you do radio. Sorry. 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 Oh, really? <laughs> says the guy who sh- showed us his swords. <laughs> Audio. showed us his swords and I didn't talked bring... about it in a way that sounded like he might have been showing us something else. I was showing some swords, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's actually funny. I, I talked to them um, from my house, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So that was the other question is how many people are here have listened to Fathoms Deep? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Those of you who haven't, we did chat with Zach already when he was home. We were all in our homes and uh it was really fun. We got to see his garage. Yes, that's where I keep my beer. Yep, exactly. And beer we got to see his swords, which came where, out a where, little cryptic. Yeah, the, the sword was uh, <laughs> the sword was on my mantle, but I didn't really realize I was doing radio, so I was like, this is my yeah, sword. Is like, <laughs> Isn't it awesome? <laughs> well, we Chad did fun. have the benefit of fully amusing Toby Schmitz, because you yeah. were like, you know this. Yes. Let me show you this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's what I said, right? Yeah, I was like, you know this. You and did you? And you actually asked Toby, like, what was he showing us? Uh, no, I did actually, for the sake of the listeners, say, "Hey, everyone, Just so you know. right now we're in Zach's living room." Yes, sure. Yes, they are. Why didn't we tell you, right? <laughs> Okay, we're going to do this now, now. All right, back okay. on track. Those are, my, okay. those are my questions. Now we're official. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a black sales podcast from Common Room Radio and live from Dragon Con. I'm Elizabeth Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive. We're here with our guest. Zach McGowan, what's up? Woo! Yeah, Fathoms Deep. <laughs> are we going to go Fathoms Deep today? This is what we do. This is what I we hope do. you're ready to... Plunge these depths with us. We'll start with Rondo, oh, yes. I think. Yes, I think we should start with a toast because we did have a lovely interview with Zach, but it wasn't in person. Uh-huh, and yes. now we get to be with Zach in person. Yes, they are black sales. These great. Glasses. I, I have these same shot glasses. <laughs> I do. I use them all the time. Wait, they didn't just give them to podcasts. No, they're great. You throw them in the freezer and they stay super cold. <laughs> How have I not thought of that? I feel so dumb. Yeah. That's such a domestic goddess thing I should know. Yeah. I'm doing that next time. It's I use really... these all week long. Yeah, they're great. And they're made in China. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Daphne doesn't use hers as often as mine. Mine are all rusty and everything Let's do already. It. Okay, now I just would like to say for everyone, I've had Toby Schmitz pour me drinks and Zach McGowan pour me drinks, and my life is awesome. How, 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 steep, life how steep are we going here? Steep. Uh, I'm little, so more? just All right, all right, all right. Yeah, there we go. More for Daphne. Yeah, all right, all right. Anyone who listens to us knows that this is what I do when I podcast. I was on an airplane <laughs> last night. Drinking all night, yeah. so let's get about the back on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Cheers, darling. Welcome to the crew. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, so we wanted to start with, I think that this was one of my questions from our last interview, which did get cut off because of phone. Yeah, I, I think my phone ran out of batteries. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. It always funny. runs out of batteries. <laughs> I swear. Happens. I don't know. Yep. Uh, the, those iPhones, they I just know. drain. They just do that. Maybe in the new one, they'll have a better battery. Oh, so something that has been a trend on our podcast, which we really, really enjoyed, is that almost every actor, and maybe even, I think, feel like Lucas Etlin even did a Zach McGowan imitation for us. I think everyone has done their impression of you doing Bane. But in addition, a lot of them have done you being Zach. And the favorite impression is your audition. Oh, yeah. Everyone does Which ended up scene. being mm-hmm. a big story because Luke told the story. You know, mm-hmm. he's not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was funny. It was so funny. It was funny. Um, yeah, I mean, I... 
I, I was lucky enough to, to, to put that tape down and, and get that role. I mean, literally, that was, uh, that was not going to happen. They were not going to hire an American on, on that job. Uh, but tell, tell, was, tell everyone what you said. I said, I, I slated instead of, you know, normally when you do an audition, you don't, uh, you like slate your name and your height and where you're from and all that stuff. And, uh, and then you, uh, and then, you know, you kind of go into the scene and, uh, in, instead of doing that, I think, I, I think I said something along the lines like, Zach McGowan, LA, and I am Charles Vane. <laughs> and, the, and they were like, and they were like, and I guess apparently they didn't really even watch the rest of it. I don't even know. That's why John told us. Like, That's what John told us. I was, like, I was like, really? I should do that more. <laughs> Everyone no, tells God. you not to do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> when the showrunner chooses to tell you this story, chances are you made an impression. Yeah, it worked, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I, also, I didn't have my shirt on, and I had like a chain on, and I had a, my earring in, and and I think, I think they, had, uh, they had been having a hard time following, finding that role because... And they, you know they they cast because it was yours. well no because they cast they cast Luke to either be him right. or or but you know to either be Long John or Vane and they and they weren't sure because they needed Long John to eventually become a badass so they you know it was that kind of thing and uh, and I think you know in the end um, I, I think it just kind of it was one of the things it worked the way it was supposed to work and uh, you know and. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for the world, you know. And it was, it was an amazing experience. And uh, it's, it's rare when you're an actor that you do things that you think are exceptionally good, and that you, that you don't just like, you know. I mean, there's, there's a difference between entertainment and art. Mm -hmm. And and you, you're, you know, you're an entertainer as an actor, so you're always doing that, and that's a big part of what you do. But you know, sometimes you open up a script and you're like. All right. This is more than just entertainment. This mm -hmm. is this has something to say, and this is important. Um, and uh, and that's and that's the way that felt. I think for everyone the entire time we were doing it, um, which is a, a totally different experience than you get in general on television. You know. So our question about about your this lovely story of you and your audition was, yeah. I mean, it clearly a moment of great bravado and we wanted to know <laughs> I guess <laughs> we wanted to know like was that just like I must have this role or I must be this person like what did you feel about Charles before when you did that audition like, it's so funny I, I remember I read it and you know they only they send you uh, like you, that was lucky they had three of the scripts you had one through three then which is oh, wow. which is different mm -hmm. a lot of times you just get the pilot and sure. so there's a lot of unknowns to it, um, but even in the pilot uh, and between the the, the the first three episodes, I I saw, I saw what the journey was for that guy, and I knew where it ended before they told me, and all, I, you know, it, because when you, I mean, the way TV works is, if you're introduced bad, then you're good. If you're introduced good, then oh. you're bad. And so, so I, for that I I I was like that guy. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I actually didn't particularly for myself, like a lot of the other characters, like I, I didn't, they wanted me to read, well, my agents wanted me to read on someone else. And I was like, no, that's the guy. Okay, but mm -hmm. who do you remember? Um, I'm so curious though. Cause you, I know, I think it was, I think it was, I think it was, yeah, but I think it was silver because they still hadn't cast that part yeah. yet. Right, right, right. And that was Which like, and starting. that was the one they were like, you know, you, this, you know, and a lot of, I think, cause me and Justin Chatwin were like coming off of Shameless at the same time. Mm -hmm. And like everyone, like that was the role that people in Hollywood were, were, were reading right. for. They were like, Jody could be early Yeah, silver, yeah, right? blah, 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 something like that. And, 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 uh, and I was like, no, I like this guy, and they were like, "No, that's like the badass pirate guy," you know. And I, you know, I mean, that's literally like what, that's what you get in Hollywood all the time. Like, you know, like that's how it works. Like, that's not you. You're, like, that's no, the badass you're pirate. you're the sex addict dude who takes your clothes off on Shameless, you know. And you're like, oh, and that must define the entirety of who I am. Oh my god, you know, you know, it's you still it's, need to watch Shameless. You know, I'm exactly. need to watch Shameless. <laughs> you know, so I, I mean, I think that that idea that you get, you know, kind of boxed in like yeah. that um, sure. is, is, is I mean, nowadays, now people don't want to read me on anything unless it's a badass. Right. And I'm like, what, did you get, what, like, what is wrong like, with you people? He's badass oh, with the heart of gold. Do you know what actors That's he is? is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's interesting. You always kind of, you know, you fight that as, yeah. as an actor. But it was, uh, I mean, how I felt about him, I knew that I, knew that I understood him and uh, I knew that I could justify his violence. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, As you did. I think yeah. we saw that in the yeah. performance because yeah. I, I know for a lot of people, Vane didn't work right from the beginning for some reason. Mm -hmm. For you, even. For me, I loved him from the get-go. I loved him from the start. So, But I think it's because I... I mean, you played that into the role. You played that there's motivation behind the actions. Like, you weren't just an asshole, I didn't think. I thought that Vane had, he, he had obvious history with Eleanor, and that yeah. spoke beautifully. We talked a little bit about the punching her in the face and then saying... Yeah, we talked was, about that in the last one. Yeah, yeah, it was a yeah. big one. And then I, since then, I've watched The 100. Like, I've yeah. watched The 100 before this, and I was like, dude, just like... His introductions to every show is punching the blonde girl. I'm always <laughs> punching the blonde girl in the face. What is the deal with that? Some people are into that. It's fun. Um, yeah, no, no shame. It's it's one of those things. Actually, I remember I was sitting with uh, Brad Fuller, one of uh, he's Michael Bay's partner, mm -hmm. and he, he was on set for a good portion of the shooting, and, and certainly in the beginning he was there all the time. And I remember we were up in the Rex, and it was me and Toby, and uh, and you know this this other actor who is you know, who I'm supposed to kill, and I'm supposed to, like, kind of just kill, like, just gut him in the middle of this, like, explanation and turn around to Toby and be like you were saying, you know. I love um, I love and I remember, I remember Brad was like, how the fuck is anyone going to like you? You're just going to kill this poor old black dude on this beach, mm -hmm. and that's going to be okay. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, and I was like, I was like, I don't think you understand this scene. Right. And he was like, why? And I was like, well, if you take... A crew of people who have been busting their ass to create a new life for themselves in this terrible world that's being run by powers across the sea and, and all of that and, and they're fighting away from that and they're and they're and they're they're trying to trying to create their own life. And you you put everything they've earned at risk yeah. in a in a deal and then the person who wants it doesn't even show their face. And you don't think violence is justified at that point? Like, I was like, I mean, in this world, in that, in world, that in world, in that world, in yeah. that world, you're in a spot where you're going to kill. I mean, without, you know, I mean, it's like you see what happens to the Ranger crew when we do lose that. Like, we mm -hmm. we don't have anything. We're just stuck in a tents on the beach, smoldering sun, nothing. So it's 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 kind of one of those things where, you know, he takes on the burden of fighting. Yes for his people, which is, I was like, that's what heroes do. No. I was like, you know. No, it was amazing also because that whole episode, of that, that was where you were having the chase and Silver was doing this and Gates was being, it was just like, I think I called that episode like smart pirates being smart. Yes. And they were all outsmarting <laughs> each other the whole time. And it was really important at that moment for Vane to say, you know what? Y'all can outsmart each other all you want, what? but ultimately... Yeah. I'm willing to kill a dude. I will get shit done. Because yeah. I need to protect my things. And that was, I, for me, that was really, especially, in, was that second episode, right? Yeah, it was. It was so episode. important to show that balance because that's the tension. Exactly. That's, that's the world they're, li they're inhabiting. And I mean, that's why I always said to people when, you know, they were like, what helped you get him? I was like, when I started this, I realized that he was a lion and that it was not about the world that we live in in that way that this you know the world we live in you don't do these things because we we we, we say what we want all that but in that world it it's a kill or be killed world it's not you know it's not that it's not it's not this you know even though we can talk you know we we make connections to it it's it that's what that world was and I, and, and i was I was hopeful that it would work. There was part of me that was like, oh, they're going to hate me, you know. Um, but I was like, no, I think, I think, you know, we establish it well. Like, she comes in and punches him in the face. Mm -hmm. And he does it right back because, you know, you shouldn't really walk in and punch someone in the face. That's really not, that's really not a reasonable way to start a conversation. Well, like, how did it end there? This, it's the scene afterwards that makes that it work. That makes it work. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and the whole like saving face idea and all that stuff. I remember, yes. I remember Neil, the director, was like, you know, you've got to do it to save face. And I was like, I was like, yeah, he's got to do it to save face. But also, she shouldn't be punching him in the face. <laughs> also, can we say that too? Like, it's not cool. Like, right. no one just punch people. Like, that's not the way to start a conversation. Although, the saving face <laughs> thing ends up haunting yes. Vane throughout. I mean, of that's course. one of my favorite, I think one of the things that really sold me on Black Sails as a show was I knew very little about pirates. 
Um, our listeners know this. I was not really a fan of pirates, particularly before Black Sails. I mean, now, you know, look at my life. But uh, <laughs> pirates. I also, I thought pirates were just like, uh, you know, from before it, to me, pirates were uh, the Goonies, you know. The well, Goonies. I really, well, I really, like, you know, like the people who you don't, by the way, I was at a con recently with Sean Astin. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, original pirate. Yeah, I, like, I love you. Yes. Um, but that was, you know, it was like the legend. That's, right. you know, yeah, it's like the thing course. you talk about but that you don't see. So there was, yeah, there were all these aspects of pirate life that they introduced that are fascinating to me. And one of them was the democracy of The piracy. democracy yes. and the tension that a captain lives under constantly, which, you know, they, they introduced that from the first minute of the show. Yes. And this is something that Vane struggled with. In a different way. I mean, that's what I love. Yeah. Each captain dealt with that in a different way. And Charles... I hate that we didn't see him on the ship more because that's what I, know. I want. You know, know. you want to hear, oh you hear some really funny? Yeah, did yes. you end up lobbying, like, put me on a ship with any guys? Did you I, end up doing In the entirety of that show, yeah. in three years in South Africa, I spent, like, four days on a ship. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really crazy. Wow. I'm so Twitter sorry. And, Twitter's the, aware and of I'm this. Also, yeah. I, I also... I also was lucky... Um, I say on the ship, the big ships, the little ship... Um, the the one I sail, sail in season one, I I actually I, I I believe this is true. I'm the only one who actually sailed a ship and steered it oh, really? and held and actually, and actually on water because I had to land to do oh, to wow. jump off the front of that boat there. I actually had to sail that little dinghy through this. It was a lake actually <laughs> oh God, that we were in. Darling. I love uh-huh. that. Zach, you're the only one who actually so I actually sailed. sailed that thing. I actually <laughs> sailed <laughs> that boat. I captained that boat. I yeah. like hoisted the sail myself and went away and Fabulous. and did the whole thing. So I actually got to sail like for a second, which I was wow. like, yeah, I sailing. I actually thought of what about Bob while I was doing it. <laughs> I was like, I'm sailing. You know, yeah. ahoy! <laughs> I'm way, way far away from land. <laughs> That's all I can think of. By the way, funny, because we're at a con, I have one autograph of any person in the history. Like, I only have one autograph that I ever got. Wow. And I was in third grade, and uh, my, my friend Mima, his father, was, uh, was in film somehow um, and had worked on uh, a movie called Quick Change that, uh, that Bill Murray had been in. And, you had Bill Murray's? And, and I oh went, and I met, and I, I met, what about Bob? I met, I met Bill Murray when I was in like, it was like third grade and or fourth grade or something. Awesome. And I'm, Bill. and I'm, and I'm wearing a suit because I knew I was going to meet him. And so I apparently like, third my mom, exactly like, I'm like in a wow. suit. I'm like, I got this photo at home somewhere. I'll tweet it out one day, but it's like, I think my mom has it, but I'm in like a total suit. I've got like a perfect character. My hair is like slicked back and he's like in sweatpants and like a tank top and his hair's all messed up. <laughs> And he writes, uh, it's, uh, Bill says, uh, Zach, you're a mess. A total mess. Congratulations. Bill Murray. Sweetheart, and, uh, <laughs> Sweetheart I, just, I just have to say, you just said this on the record. Yep. This is on a podcast. Yep. Going on the internet. Yep. I will hunt down that picture. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere. I think my mom has it. And if Bill's listening, I mean, obviously love him. He's the best. <laughs> Bill, I want to work with you. If Bill's listening to Fathom Steve, we all love you. We can just die happy. <laughs> no, yeah. pretty, pretty much you are the important part of your childhood. Um, <laughs> hey, I want to take a break because we forgot to do this in the beginning. We brought you a present. Ooh. We presents. did. Yeah, yeah. We brought you a present. What do I have? What do I get? As the man, I mean, you may not know this about Fathom's Deep, but one of our favorite sayings and one that we use throughout the podcast is one that you said so beautifully that how could we not say it, which is proper pirate. Proper pirate. Proper pirate. Yep. <laughs> and loyal to a fault. Loyal to a fault. <laughs> <And loyal> <laughs> you know, I was just, I had Tom Hopper over for dinner at my house like three I love, I love that weeks ago. He's a really he's fantastic guy. He's darling, yeah. And he's um, got a, just a darling son, which is beautiful. Yes. So cute. <laughs> Follow Good Tom Lord. on Instagram. Freddie, is that right? Oh, oh my God, that so child. Cute. What is this shirt? What is this? <laughs> Give it to me. Sorry. It's fine. Yes. This is the official Fathoms Deep Proper Pirate t-shirt for you. Oh, proper, proper Pirate Fathoms Deep. I love it. Check it out. Oh, on, on, online, I'm, I'm holding it up to myself right now. <laughs> Look at that. Very nice. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm happy to have some t-shirts. That's In the addition. same as, yeah, the next oh, year. Yeah. Very good ship. A Proper Pirate keychain. Oh, Proper Pirate keychain. I Got love it. Got of jewelry. This is great. I love it. <laughs> hey, I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Of course. All right. Next question. Actually, we were just yeah. talking about Tom Hopper. Can I ask you a question about about Vane and Billy? Yeah, yeah. So I was fascinated, uh, you know, 
everyone who's watched Black Sales, which it seems like is most of y'all, um, we know what happened with Billy. Boy, was that shouldn't have been a surprise, but kind of was a surprise somehow, even though well, we, we knew. Well, we had to know, yeah. Well, we know going Treasure into the Island, book, we and know that yet. things go bad for Billy, but yet. he starts so pure and sweet. I know. Our sweet cinnamon roll. Our sweet cinnamon roll <laughs> turned. <laughs> what he turned like into I said about TV, if you start out like yeah. a sweet cinnamon roll. This is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, although in, in the argument of Black Sails, like they did, like, I mean, Silver, like, how do we fit Silver into that crazy dichotomy? Like, oh, yeah. Is he good? Is he bad? Did he start good? Did he start bad? Did he end good? Did he end bad? But they did a great job getting there, yeah. I think. You yeah. Know? Silver's the most confusing character possibly on television, and I love it. Yeah, if you know exactly what happened, then tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, we, yes. We officially don't go there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not choose your own ending. Yes, exactly. Choose your own ending. <laughs> Which is so funny because we always one. talked about it being a choose your own adventure story and how That's fun that would true. be. We've and then ended up randomly, yeah. randomly in our interviews, everyone brings up choose your own adventure as a concept. Yeah. I think now I'm starting to think that John didn't do that randomly. Ah. Uh, no. I don't, John, John, John doesn't is, do anything randomly. No. John is an extremely intelligent dude who so plans everything out very, very well. I mean, I don't. I think, I think he always knew uh, in, in many ways that. You know, you, that, that's what it had to be. It's right. I mean, because right, the, a story it's, about stories. Yeah, it's a story about stories. It's not you, you don't read, you don't know what happens in Treasure Island. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. You don't actually. Yeah, there's even no when you read it, provided you're just like, what you. the hell is going on yeah. in this book? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and, and especially too with uh, you know the the history of pirates being what it were, and and the fact that everything is is second, third hand and written by a guy who heard the story yeah, in a bar that, at the... What the pirate groupie say about Charles Vane? That, that Charles oh. Vane used to boil, boil yeah. his people and eat them? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know what? Right. and you know what? In, in fact, if, if, I, if I stole for a living, that's exactly what I would hope that people thought of me. Right. I think they <laughs> because then they best, maybe wouldn't fight me. Best, and they would just give me their show. Best PR in the world. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's one of my, that is one of my favorite things that I learned about the pirates was the yeah. PR. Yeah. yeah. Was that, well, and it's funny because Jack Rackham was like pissed when he heard about that. He's like, are you kidding me? This man that I knew and I loved? But I feel like they would have been like, yeah. <laughs> you know what about me? Yeah. That's right. You know, like, that's damn right. Damn right I did. Now we know for sure. Vane would have been psyched. Yeah. So yeah, so my question about Vane and Billy, like there's, I feel like there's two moments where Vane really changes course. I mean, mm-hmm. this is something that we talk about in the podcast a lot, is that Vane, Vane is fascinating in a lot of ways because Vane is possibly what we keep calling the most pure character, or I keep calling the most pure character. That's me. We, That's me. no, yes. as soon as Billy, yes. as soon as Billy turned, we're like, no, 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 no. okay. Billy was never pure. It was... Vane's pure because Vane always he has an amazing arc, like an incredible yes. arc, a surprising arc. I mean, this is something yeah. Lauren Sorner's on the record for saying this is why she loves Vane. This is also why I love Vane because Vane, so we were, unlike Liz, Lauren and I were not like super lovers of Vane from the beginning and then... I was always your girl. Yeah, this was always your girl. What? Um, I was always... Oh! <laughs> and yet, and yet, no one cheered louder than me at the end of season two. That's probably um, true. So... Um, except me. I was oh like, my God. that's right! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I forgot to tweet. We've I been doing Vane appreciation along. all week uh-huh. on, on our Twitter, and I forgot I was actually going to tweet that today. Sorry, <laughs> um, so I find, you know, there's, so there's two moments for yeah, me the, where Vane really was just like, holy shit, I'm changing course. And one of them, again, despite his purity, Vane's purity, like the core of Vane, unlike so many other characters in Black Sails who kind of change their essential selves, mm. Vane's the character who his essential self doesn't change. He, I feel like he reinterprets yeah. the essence of himself based He's, on the situation. Exactly. It's, it's actually, it was one of those really, t- there was a couple tough moments in, in it, and I think the first one was the decision to go save Flint, obviously. Exactly. And uh, it was me and Luke down, uh, you know, Luke who played Long John, were down in, in the belly of the boat, and, you know, I've got a knife to my throat. They're, you know, we've just had that discussion. I'm literally going to kill him but somewhere outside of the boat there's someone on a bullhorn saying this speech about how all pirates are going to get hunted and I'm supposed to in that moment literally change course from everything I have wanted Mm -hmm. and been going for so to speak you know 
what he's been trying to do, right? He's going, he's looking for vengeance and to, to settle the score with Flint and all that. Um, I'm supposed to just go, you know, actually I've got another plan. And I remember it was like in the script, it was like, then considers what he's just heard. <laughs> A beat. <Nice. laughs> he decides. Like, you know, and I was like, oh, you know, when you get these things as an actor, you're like, oh, this is just. I mean, this but Billy had given Vader yeah. good speech before. He'd given, Ed. he'd given, and I was like, he's thinking about, and, and that's, and that's what I, I, I needed. To, I realized that I needed to understand it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, and, and I think it, it just became that. It, uh, you know, it, I think it was as simple as it was presented. There's a moment sometimes you realize that there are, you know, that, 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 that you're united with others that you didn't realize you were united with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that happens for, uh, for a lot of people across the world and, and all different kinds of situations. And uh, I, I didn't quite understand it. I remember we were shooting it, and they didn't have, they had like a, they had like the script supervisor reading that, you know, that speech out there at the time. So it's just like someone like, all oh, pirates get killed and then they die and then the thing, you know, it's like, you know. Where's my motivation? Yeah. <laughs> I remember, and I'd been talking a lot. We'd actually all been talking, like me and Luke and, and Toby and a bunch of people just like trying to get our minds around it. And, uh, and I just somehow, like I remember just like getting my mind around it being like, all right, I've, it's I've just I've changed course, but it doesn't it doesn't change his principles. His principles are the same. He's just he thinks he's settling a score, and Billy has enlightened him a bit by saying he's he's actually not settling a score. That's that's not what's important here, you know. And it's about whether or not you know they're coming. And I, and I think the whole season, you know, like you know, kind of Hannah and uh, you know Eleanor and 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 Flint have kind of been alluding to this thing coming, and he just doesn't believe it. But I also talked to John a lot about it. I was like, are we saying, you know, we never said specifically whether Vane was even from England or whether he'd ever mm-hmm. been there or seen that whole thing. So I was like, oh. you know what I mean? We talked oh, about right. that. All. I always assumed whether, he wasn't at we, all whether because, he had, of, yeah, because of the Bayman. Yeah, exactly. So whether he had ever seen the power that is mm-hmm. the English Empire, like up close and personal, you know, like all the rest of the people who have actually sat and seen the redcoats like he hasn't seen redcoats he's you know what i mean he's been yeah. in living in outlaw society for like his whole life or at least since his like his recollection so he doesn't actually have a true understanding until then of what they face right that's an he, essential that's as close Flint, that uh, we we talked about it i was like that's as wow. close to a major city as he ever gets oh god yeah like you know right. what I mean? He's right. never. He does, he's not allowed in Charlestown. Like, you're not allowed to go to Charlestown as a pirate. Like yeah. you get hung. Right. They ha- they had someone right. hang in there. You and know, so it's like yeah. that's his first time seeing that. It's kind of like I was like. It's kind of like being like, you know, like I picture like my, you know, my, you know, grandparents who came to America and like saw New York City and right. saw the Statue of Liberty and they were from farms in the middle of nowhere. You know, like that has to have a, an effect. And so I kind of took that. That was the moment. That's the moment where he realizes that, you know, there's this. He didn't quite understand civilization, right? You know, because he wasn't right. from it. Right. So it's like, oh, there's this. There's all these people who they hate us for who we are, and they want to kill us, and they don't care whether you stole my boat or not. That's interesting. So basically, <laughs> for Vane, in a way, Eleanor and Flint were kind of civilization up until exactly, that point. yeah, until yeah, him actually seeing, so, you know, so being there. So it's true that I mean, I always see like Vane's primary motivation as freedom slash loyalty. Yeah. So for him, freedom had been up until that moment fighting against Flint. Flint, who was right. who was kind of the man. Like that he was right. that was, was the man, man. you know like you know what I mean man. like like to him he was fighting against yeah. the man and yeah, yeah. like Flint was the man. <laughs> right. You know, wow. Flint was the one who was telling everyone what they had to do sure, and what they should course. do and and all of that. And greater he, good. The greater good and all yeah. that. That was what... Well, and he probably, I, I mean, Teach, obviously, really was annoyed by Flint. So I'm sure he had gotten an yeah. ear fill from Teach about, like, that dude, he just keeps telling us what we do is wrong. Exactly. You know, and uh, and obviously having huh. to... And having, you know, you learn later that he only sided with them because he was in love with Elena. And that's, you know, that's... I mean, that's an excuse that's, so that's good enough for almost every dude I know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you know, you know, sorry, it's my girl. <laughs> you know. I'm actually very interested in your perspective on Vane's love for Eleanor. Yes, that's something we talked about so yeah. often in the well, podcast. Well, and also 
we got Hannah's side. So we did get know. Hannah's yeah. side. Seems only fair. Yes, we did yeah. get Hannah's side of what she felt uh, about the relationship. But I'm very curious to know because uh, the yeah, dynamic of got, course was great. We also got Jess's side. So actually, yes, yeah. we've we've yeah. actually we've heard about it from everyone. We'd love to hear about it from you now. I I thought that uh, the, that first episode of season two when uh, Maine is sitting in the fort and uh, Adele and him are having sex and and uh, you know and Elena walks in. Adele leaves and they have that discussion. I think that right there sums it up. Like, he's like, what is going on? Well, I got a house? I mean, we've been saying we've been house. doing this for a long time. Are and we going to do this or are we not? I, you know, it's, are we going to do this or not? You know, I mean, yeah. and I, I remember oh I remember they were trying to decide on the show too. Like, should we do it? And then I remember like John was like, no babies. No babies on no pirate babies. Oh, you know, exactly. Oh my god, it never even occurred to me that there <laughs> you know, might be pirate babies. You know, like no pirate babies. I'm I mean, that, that so was. I think stars. I think people. Wrote. I think there was people pushing for. I think stars were pushing for like a pirate baby and oh, yeah. the whole thing. And, <laughs> right. You know, the, you know, the pirate. There were no pirate babies, right? Oh, that would have been very. That's no cool. world for children. Right. I mean, honestly. Right. It's yeah. bad enough that we have to hear like you know that we have to imagine what Bane's childhood would have been with the oh. man. Terrifying. By the way, by the way, there was so much more in dialogue about that that got cut down, and oh. at points it was laid out. I have theorized outright. quite a bit on the internet yeah. on a podcast. Yes, <laughs> let's just say that certainly Vane had a traumatic okay. childhood. Well, no, my theory mm-hmm. was that when he saw what is his name? I forgot what his Alba, name. Alba, Albinus. Right, right. That when he saw, like, because the moment that he freaks out, where he's just like, "Wait, I just made this deal, and now I'm going to destroy. I'm going to sabotage my own deal." deal was when he saw him put his arm around that boy. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that, I think that was, uh, I think obviously everyone in the, in the you For know, me, that was enough to like... Yeah, so that was, and that around. was, and that was the idea, but I think, it, right. you know, you never know whether or not the imagery will work and stuff, so they have stuff no, in that dialogue. Works. And they had, they had, oh, you no. know, they the had... imagery worked for me. They even had, in that speech I gave, I called him out about some stuff mm-hmm. in that, because all those people were in the same boat, right? I mean, right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's not like... He was, you know, it's a, the Baymen who fight along with him, like, those are just his, like, they're just, I mean, essentially, it was, boys, it, was yeah. it was a really right. interesting thing to, to try to get my mind around, too. I was like, so, so we're all branded and, like, we are, like, owned, like, cattle, essentially, and some of us escape and some of us don't and some of us grow up in this world and we live, you know, that becomes what you know and, I mean, that happens in this world to this day. I mean, mm-hmm. the, you know, human trafficking is a huge issue in the world and uh, it's consist- consistently. And so I was trying to get my mind around that. And, uh, and then we, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, it, I think it resonated. I think the imagery worked well enough Absolutely. to, to kind of get across that none of those people were there because they wanted to be there. Right. You know? Well, and it's or, like, you know. it's like the whole thing with silver and his backstory or, you know, lack thereof, um, that, that, for me, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm some sort of horrible, sick person who, like, whose mind goes down these roads immediately. But yeah, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Makes for a good podcast. Many of you have listened to the podcast. So you, you know what my mind's capable of. But, um, but yeah, I saw that image, and it was like, had it been laid out, it actually could what? have been less horrifying. It was like I had enough visual imagery there for my mind to say, holy shit, this is probably what his childhood looked like, and now... Like just a million times more empathy. Exactly, it's amazing to see what like how much makeup can tell the story. Mm-hmm. You know, like that. I mean, that scar, right? That's a makeup deal. Mm-hmm. And, and wow. I mean, really, yeah. the way that story got told was, you know, Vane has that scar. You see it on that boy when the boy wakes him up. Yep. Already, and, and already, it's all. You there. already, yeah. you're kind of going, all right. So people have a mark. Is that like a? Is that because they want to, or because we've already seen the big dude? He doesn't look quite so welcoming but you don't know whether or not and quite I think so welcoming. you know you're not, you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean he's so like yeah. although if you go on the internet that actor they're like one of our listeners posted Garth like, Collins yes like sent us like video of him like disco dancing oh, on he, some, by on the way, TV show Garth Collins <laughs> is if you're listening he is a legend of a man he is uh, I think I can't remember how many grandkids he has but I think it's like 30 or something That's like that because my daughter was being born while we were working mm-hmm. together so he's like oh I got like 30 grandkids you know like, and he's like the biggest person in the history of the world like he's just 
He's, they call him Granite. So they just like to put, Granite. put you acting up against the I, They always men. just have me fight either. <laughs> they either. Did, I'm, I, I fought now like all different kinds of people on TV. I mean, I, I'm just waiting to fight like a cartoon next. Or, <laughs> um, you know, like, you know, but um, yeah, it's uh, he was he was he was great. But he's they call him Granite. He was actually remember like American Gladiators. Yeah, remember that? They had South African Gladiators. <laughs> And he was the big dude on that. So he's like hugely famous in South Africa. Like when you walk around with him, you See, know. Now I want some yeah. like backstory where where like it's actually Teach who came and saved Vane. I mean, I want I want Vane to save himself ultimately. But on some level, I really want that dude and Ray Stevenson. Yeah, dude, right? <laughs> they were. Scene, they were to like fight over who gets to be Vane's dad. Yeah, who's, who's my pirate? <laughs> yeah, who's my pirate daddy? That'll be that's gonna be the book I write. <laughs> who's my pirate daddy? <laughs> Um, a memoir by Zach McGowan. Well, actually, me and me and Schmitz and uh, and and Paget and and Arnold a lot spent a lot of time uh, coming up with uh, autobiography titles. Yep. So I might awesome. maybe maybe my autobiography. Who's your pirate daddy? There you go. Oh yeah, <laughs> sweetie, that is that is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have to check with my daughters to see. Um, yeah, no, but Garth was fantastic, and uh, I, I think that was a really, uh, a really impactful. I mean. Essentially, I think we got uh, a window into why he is the mm-hmm. way he is, you know. And, Absolutely. And I loved it because I had been pitching the whole time. I remember early on I'd been saying to, to, uh, to John and, uh, and, and Robert, I was like, he's a lion. And they'd be like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, like in his mind, like he, doesn't, he doesn't come from an, an environment like we come from, right? Like, right, you're saying he, because they told me early on, and, you know, that, that they were going, I was like, he's not. And so when I really, I, w- I really got the understanding of what that was there. I was like, he just comes from like a pack of wild men who are controlled by the biggest among them. Yeah. You know, it's, wow. it's. So when they did that line from Teach about a lion. Yeah. That was basically an homage to you. Well, that was and like. You, and wait, didn't, didn't Vane say like, this is what I've been telling everyone all along. That's what Vane said to yeah, Teach. Yeah. They all told me I was crazy. When I, when I talk like this, they told me I was crazy. Yeah. No, literally. So that, like, was the that was me in, and that was me and, me in creative meetings. People were like, he's fucking crazy. He thinks he's a lion. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I mean, not like literally. I mean, just like that's his mindset. It's not that of, you know. He doesn't. He, if you're saying he doesn't have a mother and father like that, he knows. I mean, obviously, if he grew up in that environment, he would be. I mean, imagine growing up. I mean, I don't know what that's like. I, there's almost. It's like. I mean, essentially, it's like the children soldiers and stuff that have yes, to. Absolutely. You know, that have to be put through. You know, rehabilitation because they never had a childhood. I mean, that's that's what that right. is. And then the know. irony of Eleanor. Yeah. Saying. Exactly. That I mean, makes you a monster. And the clo- and she's the closest but thing to a mother. To be fair, he's ever he had, had been you know? a real asshole to her seconds before. He had. Hey, I'm sorry. She had just punched a dude in chains. For real. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I'm not sure if I got the timeline right there. I'm not really no. sure. I'm not no, sure. No, I, I, I said, I said, I said, I said. He said the thing about his, his father. About her, yeah. Eleanor's father. Well, yeah. He was a shit. Was he wrong? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I love what she said. You can't understand what you took from me and why it was good. And that's why it was so great I when Flint right. did understand and didn't take from her that, you know, yes, your husband is good. That he didn't do this. True. Sure. There was an understanding and a level of compassion Sorry, that just in that moment. I think Vane again. failed to show. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think Vane didn't. You know, I, I, I mean, I think at at that point he, you know, he had already he, like he, he, he went there to do that. Like you know he yeah. you know he, he had already made his point. Like essentially, the only thing that he wanted to live for at one point was Alan on possible possibility of having a life, and then mm-hmm. after that, it was just. You know the, you know Blackbeard and and that idea, but that didn't really kind of work out the way he wanted because that meant he's going to have to leave all these other people and Jack's in trouble and all that stuff. And it mm-hmm. was just, I think, I think there's a moment when you like people realize what's important and like he was like, those two have a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, I my my I'm I don't have a chance anymore. I, I you know. Okay, so that actually brings us to the other big turning point. 
was right before the duel. This was my next question. Yeah, why is he so bad? Yeah, and I, I, uh, I talked a lot about it. I found that scene fascinating, that conversation between Vane and Flint, um, where Flint, it's always hard to tell with Flint if he's like saying what he needs to say or saying what he feels. Say what, or saying what, what he thinks will right, exactly. resonate. They're, right, exactly. When he says, they're, they're t- that's my home, they're trying right. to take and home. Right, the, but then he says to Vane, what matters is who are you? Yeah. So for you, what what was the answer to that? Like Vane, I mean, Vane obviously did what Vane did. For you, for me, I, I I'm I'm loyal to my friends, okay. and to my you know, and to to what I think is you know, I to me that's what it meant to him. It was like, who are you? And he was like, I mean, essentially, I'm either represented by just that guy, mm-hmm. or I'm represented by something better. And I I think, you know, it's like. I mean, it's kind of like I always talk to John and about it. I was like, right? I mean, and Bonnie's on Vane's ship, right? So, you know, they, there's something different about him than these other characters because, right? I mean, there's, sure. there's okay. like a woman on his ship, and mm-hmm. there's this like, there's this, there's this inclusiveness and just freedom, even though there's this brutality and all of that kind of going together. And I think it, I think it was just like a choosing of that side of like, you know, I'm gonna. I don't know how about my, my friends, mm-hmm. you know, because, Dad, you're a dick, you know. <laughs> you know, I can stop trying to kill my oh, but butt. But he tells you know. really good stories, yeah. though. He tells great stories, and he wax poetic and whatnot, but oh, but it's yeah, kind of like, hey, I mean, I remember, yeah, it's like, hey, Dad, stop trying to kill my buddy, you know. It's like, and that kind of, it, it was it was kind of, I think it was that simple, and I remember that that uh, that fight also in 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 the uh, in the script to the 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 this what you saw changed quite a bit mm-hmm. as well. Really? Um, yeah. Originally there Wait, was. But that was a Lucas episode, right? Yeah. Um, it, so that was. Uh, but like originally, I mean, I think they had a more of a sword fight between me and and Blackbeard at that point. Um, I'll have a little more too. <laughs> Are we Don't doing be stingy that? with that room. Right. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think they originally had There's some. Kate. Kate. Thank you. Um, they originally had some more stuff in uh, in there, and kind of me and Blackbeard fighting more and whatnot. Nice. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't a hundred percent sure uh, that was right. And me, me, and me, and 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 Ray weren't. I was like, you know, would we actually engage in in kind of <laughs> mortal combat against one another? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Just We've got this. It's fine. Well, well, when we run out of that one, no. <laughs> <laughs> we just pull this out of it. No. Um, I think it would have it would have distracted from what it was, which was actually an emotional beat. It wasn't a fight beat. Yes, like, you know, absolutely. Say, and because I, I always I just I just I, I distinguished between the two because you know fighting is not emotional. It's you just either have to do it or you don't. Um, and and then and yet like, in Black Sails, so much of it is emotional. Yeah, I know. I, I guess I, I can't say. Yeah, myself. that's interesting. Yeah, what? you know what I mean. I mean, it's emotional, but I mean, like you know, it's it's like I didn't want. I I didn't think it was the right time either for right. like a sure, duel sure. between me and I was like, we've just watched a duel. It's more just like get some space, right. protect the guy right. who's right, about right, right. to get killed, who we know is on the same side of this with us and why can't these two assholes just get along? Like, I figured out how to get along with him. Can you know? Yeah. It's like... That's, wait, should that just be like the subtitle of Black Sails? Yeah. How do I need to... Why can't these, why can't these assholes get along? <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe the subtitles for the world? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Black Sails. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Representing mm. all of humanity. Yes, here we go. Yep. <laughs> Boy, that is good. That's the Zaya. That's really good. Yeah, that, right? this is your. This, yeah, I know. Zaya, you I'm telling right. you, it's right. I mean, it's for rum. for the price, you can't really beat that yeah. rum. No, that's yeah. delicious. What happened was that when we were, I think it ended up off the record. It's not actually on the interview. No, because I yelled "motherfucker" into the microphone, and I remember that strongly. Are you not allowed to yell "motherfucker"? No, I am. Oh no, I just was like totally on the podcast. I yeah, John, we were talking to John Steinberg, and oh, we were if like, the, we if were the like, origin rum. story right, was made. Stars it. I don't had know. sent me some rum, mm-hmm. and I was like, they "Damn, was, that's good rum." Yeah, yeah, man. And I was like, "Okay, now I want to drink rum because I usually drink scotch." And I was like, "John, what do you drink?" He's like, "I don't," but Zach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, you want to know how he knows what Zai I drink? Well, so John and I live like a mile away from each other in nice. California, and uh, actually the 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 like pharmacy that we all our families go to is the same one. So like I always run into we run into each other like that all the time. I mean, seeing each other, but 
CVS sells Zaya randomly. What? So like when you're going to buy you your deodorant, you're going to buy like deodorant and like there's rum there and they actually sell it. They sell it for like half price. They sell it for 19.99 there and you're like That's insane. You're kind of just and and it's if you really and if you buy it six really bottles, good. I think they sell it for like 16.99. So I always just go in every time I go to 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 there, I always am walking out with six bottles of Zaya. <laughs> Like from the pharmacy, like a, you know, like like a good like I a have good a guy, thick. and it's yeah. Fine. yeah, exactly. And so, and so I ran into John's wife, and uh, and she was like, "What the fuck? Like what? what?" It was like a Tuesday, you know. I was like, you know, I was like, I was like, oh, I just you know, I stock up on rum at the CBS, you know. It's, it's a it's a good Proper spot pirate. to get it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, see, we did my questions. I wasn't even sure I wanted that we were going to get to. That's right. You were going to ask about uh, the friendship with Jack, with how you thought that their uh, dynamic yes. rolled. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. I'll never forget the first moment I started working. Well, I mean, we met. So I met. So actually, it's actually funny. I have two friends in my world that I've met on social media the first time. And uh, one of them's over here. I haven't quite gotten down to to say what's up yet, and we're going to talk a little more in a second. <laughs> but the other one is, to- is Toby, because when we got on the show, I I, uh, I immediately knew, you know, you read and you see who's cast and whatnot, and I, you know, look whether your castmates are on Twitter, and I see Fall of Sparrow, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. All right, cool. Let me tweet at him. Hey, Fall of Sparrow. Uh, this weird I was because like, me and because me and me and me and uh, Clara had shown up like a week before him, and mm-hmm. he was late oh, right. to he, pirate well, camp. He was also one of the last. <laughs> yeah. Guys, <right? laughs> yeah, he was. Like, he, he talked to us about how like all yeah. the accents were taken up. Oh yeah, and so that's why he. Uh, that's why he did his thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, he uh, he was late because he I think he was doing a play or something, and then was was coming in, and As so I tweeted I tweeted something with me and Clara and being like you know. That falls out. Where are you? And he and then he tweeted back, waylaid by stormy seas, Captain. See you in a fortnight or something. And I was like, I was like, I love this guy. As people do. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's great. I I, uh, I I met I met him as soon as he as he showed up, and we we started actually. I think we met at the the first time in person at the stunt training session, which of course is was, was Toby's most. Uh, you know, favorite places yeah, to be actually, were in the stunt I, I training think I sessions. I sell my soul for videos of him doing the fight training. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome. It was awesome because he I mean, he showed up like he'd never been really doing much physical stuff, and he'd never been quite an athlete. And they put everyone through. I mean, even like I was in really good shape, and I mean, they were they were making everyone vomit. Let alone no matter how good in shape you were, you were going to vomit. You know, that's how cool. that's how that's how tough it was. Okay. Um, but it worked. Exactly. I mean, hey, I Clearly. I got really shredded during that show. Um, but yeah, they uh, they you know we, it was me and him doing that, and I was watching him just kind of you know struggle through it. But he but he's also he's really tall, and so like I had to like sword fight the first time I sword fought against another actor, kind of in like a little thing was with him, and he's so tall, he's got this really long reach. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like anything. You know, it's like. In boxing, like a reach matters. This in a sword fight, you mean you have the longer reach. So it was a really interesting kind of thing, and and we kind of were doing that, and we hadn't really got a chance to like hang out. We'd just been like bashing each other and all that. And then I remember we were like leaving, and I was like, "You drink?" And he was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Let's go do that." And <laughs> I like, I like you asked Toby Schmitz, "Do you drink?" Yeah, you know, you know, you don't know anyone. You're just showing yeah. up. You know, you never know what people, you know, some people don't drink, some people, I mean, you know, you meet actors who are alcoholics who don't drink, who are alcoholics who do drink, and or alcoholics who say they don't drink. And then there's um, but, you know, functioning there's alcoholics. And there's Toby. And, uh, and then there's Toby. And Toby was Just double fantastic. tested all night. Yep. Yeah, Still in one hand, Manhattan in the other. Yes. You're my guy. I like you. I, 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 yeah, I, I learned that there's, 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 not everyone will drink like hard liquor and a beer at the same time with you. And I grew up at a bar, so, you know, that... That's I, I we, mother's milk. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, me and him uh, spent more time talking about the backstory of yeah. everything, and and I don't think that either of us would have understood what we were doing nearly to the extent of what we were doing without those discussions. I mean, and to be honest, Clara was there for all of them, and like Clara was like learning how to be like strong and silent a lot because she's not a strong and silent person, mm-hmm. you know. Like so, it was I I remember like. Watching, I mean, it's so amazing to watch people kind of 
fill the shoes that they have to fill and, and mm. take them. Um, and, you know, that early period was... Uh, and then, I mean, that, that basically never ended. And including when I wasn't there. I was just Skyping with them, yeah. like, off in some other place, you know, and, and Toby being, they're having me do this? It makes no sense. I've got it. What do I, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all that kind of journey. And, uh, I mean, he's... I, I love that dude. We he's love that awesome. dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a great guy, and and he's also amongst. I mean, I've, I've been I've been happy, like lucky enough to work with a lot of different actors and all big actors and small. They, they don't really get any better than Toby. You know, he, you're not you're never going to really get to work with a better actor than that. You know. So now you now you have fulfilled the other trend in Fathom's deep it's culture. True. We is don't that, do this. Is they, that yeah, right? Do it. Liz, okay. Actually, Liz just asked me. Um, this morning, she's like, "So, how is it that we always end up talking about Toby with all the actors?" Because so everyone wants awesome. to be Toby. <laughs> Thank you. So it's so this funny. Actually, happens. I was sitting with I was sitting with Luke recently. Um, I'm doing I'm doing a bit I'm doing a, a like a, a part on uh, Damnation right now, uh, a show uh, on USA, and me and Which I can't wait to yeah, see. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very it's good. a really interesting. It's a very different side of me that you. But I'm I'm playing Toby's part in this. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, like whoa. so. Me and Luke, oh, no, I, me and Luke have me and Luke have been it. trying to get cast as a Toby part. <laughs> like we like this is like okay, a kind of like sure. a, so me and uh, you know we all com- you know we kind of have like little try to do this try to do this um, so me and him have b- both been trying to just like get a, a Schmitz part like and and do a Schmitz part a- as best as we can you know and be and have that and flamboyance and that and that and that presence of of intellect to you know to yes. just to just go and and mm-hmm. be and, and and know that you'll make it on wits rather than anything else um and so i i mean tennyson while not being all that but it's it's it, it's probably the closest i'll ever get to playing a schmidt's part oh i'm so excited um, yeah so it's uh very excited and yep. i'm Lots of and i'm doing just as ridiculous of a accent but i'm yes. pulling it off because apparently everyone there likes it so Can't wait. i'm doing my best yes yeah. that's uh, fantastic so. <laughs> That is fantastic. That's yeah, really going yeah. to be fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, but yes, you have now. You have now proven our thing that really all of you all adorably can't resist talking about Toby. It's so oh, and he's you. just. I mean, it's basically you and Toby. So that's true. That's true. The two about trends Zach and Toby. are yeah. everyone must talk. Everyone must do Zach McGowan, and everyone must talk about Toby. Is that a trend? <laughs> Listen, everyone do Zach McGowan. That's, that's the exactly. lesson. Hashtag. Hashtag. Everyone do Zach McGowan. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. That's my favorite part of the podcast. No, you just take credit. Yeah. Take, yeah. That was me. What? That was not the wrong. <laughs> no, that was great. Turns out we're doing stand-up comedy up here. <laughs> He's married. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, Sorry. you know what's funny? Uh, th- this this weekend, this this weekend is my nine-year anniversary. Or no, last weekend. No, this this weekend it was my nine-year anniversary. Not of my wedding, of my bachelor party. Oh, very memorable. My wedding comes up in a little bit. Okay, I know that. Everyone gets to fantasize about what your bachelor party is. So, are you, wanting, you want to tell right. you something? Yes. This is this actually, you guys want to tell us. Kitchen and Bar well, Culture, Yeah, right? so I grew up there, but so yes. we went, we went, like, we like went for my bachelor party. My, my brother, Matt, who mm-hmm. many, many of you know from the internet, um, he was much richer than me at the time because he had a the job. <laughs> um, so he, he took me and a bunch of my broke friends and uh, Doug, my brother, who somehow got off, like, he was, like, in a war and, like, took a plane to wow. Cabo San Lucas. And, uh, this is a good passion And, party. yeah, we, we okay. had the most unbelievable... But, but to tell you what happened is somewhere out there, and, and Matt... You know, you know Matt McGowan's uh, Twitter thing, and you can, you can have... Somewhere out there, he has photos of me wearing a Borat... The Borat banana hammock... Oh, I'm wearing the. Bo- I, they made me wear the bo- the Borat oh, banana hammock really to the must pool. Stop bringing up these. Oh no! I, on come on! Podcast. There's terrible. <laughs> there's much worse of me on the line. Like, like, it's actually funny. It's when people take photos with me. I know. I now want the Bill Murray thing. And the that thing. So there's yeah. two photos. Right? So the, show notes? Doesn't that need to be the, the show notes, everyone? Yeah, the, the banana hammock shot is, is I have a shaved head and I'm doing a handstand in a banana <laughs> <laughs> With like a bunch of like drummers you. around okay. me and I'm getting champagne like sprayed in my face. But I remember I went totally blind because of it. It was the first time I ever got champagne sprayed in my face. Totally blinds you. Wow. <laughs> An experience. Not the last time. I've in the future, maybe. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just an honest person. 
<laughs> oh but yeah, somewhere God. out there that exists. So, okay, so the last thing, you know, we have not spoken in either of these interviews about, you know, yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. That was a tough day. <laughs> I bet. God. Is there anything in particular you want to tell us about? I mean, the thing that I love, well, there's many things I love about it. I love the line. Get on with it. Yeah. Motherfucker. Right. Is that, that is a reference, right? Did John tell so, us yeah. that that's a reference? So, it's, it's, they, in the historical record, there's a couple kind of uh, accounts of that. I mean, there's accounts that say he said nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, does the prisoner have any final words? Said nothing, and th- and then there's some accounts that said uh, that he said, "Get on with it," um, not the motherfucker. Um, and uh, that was all me. <laughs> and and, <laughs> Good flourish. and uh, I remember we were. I mean, there was there was, you know, like a like a lot of stuff with Vane in general. There was a lot left to interpretation, and a lot uh, where where it was in the writing, but we weren't sure if it was right and whatnot, and. I remember, like, Tom's like, you know, we were talking about it. Is, is the motherfucker a little too, like, you know, is it, is it, is it too contemporary? Is it, is it too this? Oh my God. I feel like it Seriously? almost was, actually. It, it almost, almost was. was. I can I, see why they had that conversation. Right, but I love So we did an was, alt. We did an right? alt that oh. may actually, I think, have made the, because, uh, you know, they do these TV cuts for them. Right. Um, oh. where, and so I did an alt up there where I said, um, get on with it, slave. Um, that's where I said that's that, was, that, was, that, that was that was that was that was and that was mine. I think that's the one that's in the uh, in the in the TV cut um, because I never because when you do the ADR on the TV cut, mm-hmm. you, you know they're like now say get on with it, mother father, you know. And I was like, and I, I literally was in there, and I've never done this because I normally will say anything. I was like, I literally, I was like, fuck you. I was like, I was like, yeah, that's not gonna happen. I was like, you know, I was like, you can hire someone else to say that. I was like, <laughs> You know, it's, yes. it's, there's plenty of people who can do this. Son. And good luck finding yeah, someone good, who can do my yeah. voice. I was like, just get someone else in Most here of the cast has a pretty yeah. good one, actually. Yes. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Well, I, I, I've got them working, working on, on the on cigarettes. That, right. so, yeah. <laughs> um, and the coin trick. Yeah. The cigars. You, it's just a oh, great yeah, the coin character. Trick. Wait, so wait. This is random... The 100 question. Yeah. Did you and Ricky Whittle like totally just do coin tricks together? Because what the hell? That's it was right. like we, we actually podcasted also about American Gods. It's actually really funny. And we funny. were just like, what? You no, know, we didn't. We didn't. But I, I saw him recently at, at something, and I was like, I was like, good with the coin trick. He, I was like, how many hours? He was like, yeah, a lot. I was like, yeah, it's, it takes a couple hours. <laughs> it takes you know? some time. So yeah. For yeah. everyone who hasn't seen American Gods, Ricky Whittle, who was with yeah. Zach in oh, the no. 100, mm-hmm. and it's awesome. Both of them, and it's on stars. Yes, uh, and um, good PR. American yeah. Gods is Ricky Whittle oh. is the star, and he also does coin tricks. So it was just really, yeah. it was just like a fun little moment for those of us who have seen all of those shows. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I that's I I was watching the trailer, and I actually like was like, oh, nice, nice work. I was like, yeah. You know, because you well you, done. Son. By the way, it's yeah, exactly. It's one of those things that's like not only is it hard to get. But then it's hard to get, like, in, and depending on what position they have you in for camera, you know, he's, like, lying down. Right. Like, I remember when I was doing it, I was, like, they were, like, you know, we got you in this chair, and that chair, these, like, arm, like, I was, like, man, this is not ideal. I don't have to. And then I got, like, I was, like, I looked over, and there was, like, a couch, and I grabbed a couple pillows, and I put them under it so I wasn't so deep in. You know, it's, and yep. this, I mean, this is what you actually okay. deal with a Nobody lot. Nobody wants to think you know? about about Charles Vane going. I'm not really comfortable right now. Can I have a few? Pictures? I'm no, sorry. I love this. Where he's I like, think that's how it really yeah, works. I mean, I got sort of an. I'm, I'm an honest person. No, it wasn't even the comfort. It was just like you know, at a certain angle, like gravity. You know, it's 9.8 sure. meters per second squared. You can't really mess with it. Right. You know, throw it uh, down. Well, you try. So wait, did, that wasn't in the script or anything. That no, was just no, like no. you being like. No, they didn't give me any lines in that whole. I was like nine pages of shit. You still no. I, I like, talked about this like, in the podcast. Like you're just in the room, scene, only in the so, room. By the way, the by the way, room. I remember because yes. I was I was smoking the uh, the cigar I mean, and everyone was were. like everyone yes, was like were. this is too much of a distraction. Blah blah. You have to get done on the cigar and I was like I was like I not no. I was like <laughs> no. And they were like, it's too much of a distraction. I was like, exactly. I was like, that's, I was that's like, what like, don't forget I'm here, motherfuckers. I was like, exactly. yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, everyone's saying nothing anyway. 
I was like, you know, I was like, Sounded I was like, very good. You know, I was, that's that was the way. That's I, very Charles Vane. Everyone's basically saying nothing. nothing. <laughs> no one means what they say here. So yeah. what's the matter? That's amazing. You know, wow. it's, uh, all right, which so love it. We're supposed to Are we wrap done? it up. Yes, looks like. Okay. okay, Zach. Well, you know. Thank you so much. We thank you. you. This is the best, and yes. thank uh, you for doing part two. Of part two. <laughs> <laughs> of our interview. Everyone hasn't listened. Listen to part one of our interview. It's in our feed. Lots of fun. Yes, at commonroomradio.com. Um, Fathoms Deep is the podcast. Yep, you can find this, it there. This man is a blessing to humanity and so much fun. Oh, no, stop. 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 <laughs> she tells lies. Uh, thank you for everyone who's listening. Um, thank you for watching. Love you all. Be well. Peace. Hashtag everyone be <laughs> <sad. laughs> Give it up again for Daphne, Elizabeth, and Zach. Deep is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash commonroomradio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag FathomsDeep and follow us on Twitter at Black Salescast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening.